At some point, you've likely heard that what you eat doesn't affect your skin. That is old science and old thinking, and we now know that it is simply not true. There is a wealth of research that shows that food has the potential to make your skin brighter, clearer, and more youthful. And luckily for you, I have read and implemented a lot of this research so you don't have to. So in today's video, we're going to talk about food strategies that can really make a difference when it comes to common skin concerns. And we're going to break it down by concern covering premature aging, dry skin, acne and eczema. So a quick hello if you're new here. My name is Fiona and I'm a registered nutritionist with a master's degree in nutritional medicine. On this channel we talk about nutritional skincare which is the concept that the food that you eat can be an easy and effective part of your skincare routine. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button to make sure you're the first to get all the latest science fact tips. Right let's get into this. The first skin concern on our list is premature aging. Now this includes fine lines, wrinkles, dark spots or hyperpigmentation and loss of elasticity. You know what I mean, it's when your skin looks older than you feel. But it's not too late. Not only can the right food slow aging, but certain foods can even reverse the signs of aging you already have. There are two powerful food strategies that you can implement. The first one is to eat colourful fruits and vegetables. These are brimming with antioxidants. Not only do antioxidants protect your skin from stresses like UV rays and pollution, but if your skin is exposed a little too much, they also play a role in mopping up some of the damage and repairing your skin. It's like dual purpose skincare. And one study showed that in people aged over 45, the more antioxidants they ate, the younger they looked. So what can you do? The goal here should be to fill half your plate with colourful vegetables at every meal. And if you're not there yet, that's fine. Just work your way up to it. Even just trying one new colourful vegetable per week is a great place to start. The second powerful strategy is to be mindful of your sugar intake. Look, no one wants to hear what they should reduce in their diet, myself included. But the fact is, too much sugar will age you. It causes a process called glycation, which is where sugar molecules stick to your collagen fibres, making them stiff and making your skin more prone to wrinkling. And fascinatingly and terrifyingly, one study showed that the higher the level of sugar in people's blood, the older they look to other people. It's kind of amazing what scientists investigate. But let's not look at sugar in terms of what you should take out, but instead look at it in terms of what you should add in. So if you usually eat white bread, which is treated like sugar in your body, instead you could choose some hearty, chewy, whole grain sourdough. If you always need something sweet in the afternoon, like a cookie, instead you could get into eating almonds and dark chocolate and if you drink soda instead you could get into infusing your water with fresh fruit and herbs it doesn't have to be all or nothing over the longer term it is the small sustainable changes that really make a difference so for premature aging your key strategies are to up your intake of colorful fruits and vegetables and to mindfully reduce your sugar intake by replacing them with different more satisfying lower sugar foods Moving on to dry skin. Now this is where your skin is dull or flaky or cracked or even sometimes red and irritated. And there's a lot you can do from the inside out. So firstly, enjoy nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil, avocado and oily fish, AKA all the delicious healthy fats. These play a key role in your skin's barrier function, helping to keep it hydrated and plump. In fact, one study showed that women who ate more healthy fats had plumper, more hydrated skin. And another study showed that eating just one avocado a day helped to boost skin's elasticity and hydration too. As I said, the right food can be really powerful. Now the goal here is to have a little bit of healthy fat with every meal or snack. It could be some crunchy nuts sprinkled on your breakfast. It could be a serving of hearty salmon at lunchtime or it could be some extra virgin olive oil drizzled over your vegetables at dinner. The great thing about healthy fats is that they're also really satiating so they amp up the enjoyment factor of your meals. Your second strategy for dry skin which might seem less intuitive is to make sure you're getting enough protein. So protein rich foods are things like meat, fish, 
dairy, eggs, beans and legumes, and also nuts and seeds. So they're either the animal-based foods or the heartier, more filling plant-based foods. Not everyone knows that your skin has something called natural moisturizing factor, which as the name suggests is your skin's inbuilt moisturizer. Natural moisturizing factor is made up in part of amino acids, which come from the protein you eat. So if you're not eating enough protein, your body is going to struggle to make enough natural moisturizing factor to keep your skin hydrated from the inside out. Now, like healthy fats, the goal here is to eat some protein with every meal or snack. So rather than cereal, why not have eggs for breakfast a few times a week? And if you're snacking on fruit, can you have a few nuts or some hard cheese like Parmesan or cheddar with it? And if you're having pasta, can you serve it with some fish or a meaty bolognese sauce? You can also supplement with collagen, which is pure protein and unsurprisingly has been shown to boost skin's hydration. I've done a whole video on collagen supplements, which I will link here for you. Adding protein will help your dry skin, but a nice side effect is that it also helps you regulate your blood sugar, which gives you more consistent energy and also stabilizes your appetite. So for dry skin, make sure you're getting a little bit of healthy fat and protein with every meal and snack. Moving on to acne. Now this is the most common skin condition in the Western world and it affects up to 50% of adults. So if this is you, you're not alone. There are two food strategies you can use to help to clear your skin. Firstly, eat high fiber forms of carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates are foods like bread, rice, pasta, and other grains. Now research shows that the more refined carbohydrates you eat, the more likely you are to develop acne. And when we talk about refined carbohydrates, we typically mean anything that's sweet, white, or fluffy. So think white bread, white pasta, white rice, cakes, pastries, and also cookies and crackers. The bad news is that too many of these types of foods are likely making your acne worse. But the good news is that on the flip side, studies show that choosing more fiber rich versions of carbohydrates, so things like whole grains and fruits and vegetables and beans and legumes can help to clear your acne. So again, let's not look at this through the lens of what you should cut out, but instead through the lens of what you should add in. So if you currently eat white bagels for breakfast, could you instead switch to a hearty, delicious rye bread. If you love pasta, can you go for a whole grain version or even a brown rice pasta instead? And if you're craving something sweet, can you reach for a piece of fruit rather than a cookie or a pastry? Again, this doesn't need to be perfect, but if you make enough of these switches, I promise you, your skin will respond. Your second strategy is to get smart about dairy. So here's the deal. Some people with acne really don't do well with too much dairy in their diet. The strongest association is between milk and acne, but when we get to things like yogurt and cheese, things get a little hazier. What I see clinically is that for some people, removing dairy really does make a big difference to their skin, and the effect can be pretty quick. But it's not the same for everyone with acne. So if you have acne and you have removed dairy for at least a month and you're not really seeing a difference in your skin, you might want to think about adding it back in. And that's for two reasons. Firstly, food restrictions suck the joy out of life and we should all aim to eat as varied a diet as possible. And secondly, some research suggests that fermented dairy can actually be really good for skin. So you might want to avoid drinking gallons of milk if you have acne or supplementing with whey protein, which is just really concentrated dairy. But if you've tried eliminating dairy and the effect wasn't dramatic, then think about adding fermented dairy, like some hard cheeses and yogurt and kefir, back in. So for acne, your food strategies are to embrace high fiber forms of carbohydrates and work out which dairy works for you. Now moving on to our last skin concern, which is eczema. Now this itchy, frustrating condition affects up to one in 10 adults. And more so than any other skin condition, research suggests that your gut health really does play a role. But again, there's a lot you can do. So your first food strategy is to eat a wide variety of plant-based foods. Now, to be clear, I am not saying eat an exclusively plant-based diet. What I am saying is that however you choose to eat, make sure you're getting in a wide variety of plant-based foods, and that includes vegetables, fruits, nuts, seeds, beans and legumes, spices and herbs. That's because all of these foods feed your friendly gut bacteria and research suggests that people with eczema tend to have low levels of friendly gut bacteria. 
which may be affecting their skin's integrity. Now, if you need more convincing, a Korean study of 10,000 people showed that the more fiber they ate, the less likely they were to have active eczema. Now, related to that, your second food strategy is to eat naturally fermented foods. That's things like sauerkraut and kefir and kombucha and kimchi. Think the four Ks. So while the colorful plant-based foods feed your existing good bacteria, naturally fermented foods contain more friendly bacteria which help your gut and your skin. Now research so far suggests that probiotic supplements are best at preventing eczema. And by that I mean if a pregnant woman takes probiotics or eats probiotic rich foods, her baby is much less likely to have eczema when it's born and when it grows up. Now if you're an adult with already established eczema, obviously it's too late for that. But don't blame your mum because she didn't know and scientists didn't even know until fairly recently. But you can still help yourself using fermented foods. One study for example showed that drinking kefir for eight weeks helped to improve people's eczema and in some cases people went from having a severe eczema to mild eczema just from drinking kefir. That's a pretty impressive result for a purely food-based intervention. So if you have eczema, feed your friendly bacteria by eating lots of colourful plant-based Based foods and give your gut more friendly bacteria by eating naturally fermented foods. This is going to help your gut which is going to have a positive knock-on effect on your skin. So to sum up, as you can see food clearly affects your skin. In fact, eating the right foods can be a really powerful tool to enhance your skin, whatever your current skin concern. Now, I ordered these strategies according to what would help each condition the most, but the cool thing is that all of these strategies will help everyone's skin. They'll not only make your complexion clearer and glowier and more youthful looking, but they will also help your health in general. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, you might like another video I've done on the nutrient that you're skin loves that you're probably not eating enough of and I will link that video there. I hope to see you there otherwise I'll see you next time for another video on nutritional skincare.